Welcome back to the TWSN YouTube channel. My name is Harrison Vavnik. Before we get into this full Cotton Bowl preview, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to all the TWSN social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So much great content. We got bowl season coming up, all our bets and predictions on there. We got NFL postseason coming up, the NBA season, full swing, college basketball. We have so much great content with there. Subscribe for all the latest news and articles and videos. Also subscribe to our TWSN Patreon for all the best bets and bowls, NFL, NHL, college basketball, NBA, so much great bets. We hit on so many of our bets, our parlays, UFC, been nailing all those. So check out the TWSN Patreon for all the best bets and win yourself some money. Now let's get to the bowl preview of the Cotton Bowl between Alabama and Cincinnati. Before we get into the ins and outs of this historic Cotton Bowl matchup, it's important to track how both of these teams got here. For Alabama, their path to their seventh trip in eight years to the college football playoff was unlike any of the previous years. After three wins in the first month of the season against top 15 opponents, Miami, Florida, and Ole Miss, the Tide seemed destined to roll back into the playoff. But a stumble on October 9th saw Nick Saban lose his first game to an assistant coach in Jimbo Fisher, and that night Alabama looked like their dynasty was starting to crumble, with multiple unadvised turnovers, a kick return touchdown given up, and many defensive lapses against a backup quarterback, resulting in a three-point loss for the Tide. But the Tide rallied. They won three of their next four by 30 points or more, but then entered a stretch in the late season stumble when Alabama sliced narrow wins against Arkansas in which their defense gave up five touchdowns and then a four overtime comeback against unranked Auburn where the Tide trailed 10-3 with less than two minutes remaining before Bryce Young put the team on his back and led the comeback. Alabama entered the SEC Championship against undefeated and top-ranked Georgia. Nick Saban's Tide were a six-and-a-half point underdog, the largest spread against the Tide since Saban's first year in 2007. It seemed destined that Georgia would take rule of the SEC, and then Bryce Young happened. Alabama claimed their eighth SEC title under Coach Saban and reclaimed themselves as the number one team in the land. On September 7th, 2019, the Cincinnati football program were set to play in their biggest game in a decade. Coming off an 11-win season in 2018, head coach Luke Fickle and the Bearcats were bound to give a statement on national TV against the fearless Ohio State Buckeyes and put themselves on the map. Until... Over the next two seasons, the Bearcats won 19 of their next 22, including an American Championship win in 2020, as the Bearcats awaited their next big chance to redeem themselves. The win in South Bend sparked the program in their quest to the college football playoff. The Bearcats finished the regular season 13-0 and enough to secure their spot as the first ever group of five team to make the college football playoff. For many, the sight of Alabama against Cincinnati matchup would seem like a blowout for Nick Saban and company. But looking deeper into the matchup, don't be quick to rule out the Bearcats, and here's why. Number 1. The John Mechie Effect 
Alabama wide receiver John Mechie led the team this season with 96 catches, the most in the SEC. He piled on 1,142 yards and 8 touchdowns, only behind Jamison Williams in both categories. Mechie tore his ACL late in the first half against Georgia and will miss the rest of the season. The question is, how will Alabama replace those targets? The Tides still have Jamison Williams projected first round pick in April's draft, but after that it's where it gets tricky. Slot receiver Slade Bolden caught 32 passes this year, but just two touchdowns. The Tide have two tight ends, Cameron Laddu and Jahil Billingsley, who combined for 36 catches this year and nine touchdowns, but neither are really seen as downfield threats. A name to watch out for is Treason Holden, a four-star sophomore out of California who's only hauled in 15 career passes, but his length and athleticism will be on show down in Dallas. The only issue is who's going to be on the other side of him. Reason number two, Sauce and Kobe. Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant might be the best cornerback duo in college football. Gardner was an All-American this season and Bryant won the Thorpe Award for the best defensive back in the nation. The two have combined for just five interceptions this season, but are both exceptional in man-to-man -man coverage, and with Alabama without a top wide receiver, Cincinnati may have the edge in this category. The Bearcats gave up just 167 passing yards per game this season and allowed less than one passing touchdown allowed. Reason number three, the quarterback differential. The majority of times in college football playoff matchups, the game is decided on quarterback play. Bryce Young, the Heisman winner against NFL draft prospect and veteran Desmond Ritter. This season, Young has thrown for 4,322 passing yards, 43 touchdowns, and just four interceptions. Ritter has put together a solid season of his own with 3,190 yards, 30 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. Ritter is better in the run game, going for 361 yards and six touchdowns. We're giving Young the advantage in this matchup due to the better offensive line and the better overall weapons. I think the Heisman winner puts together a strong performance even with the absence of Mechie because of how good Jamison Williams is. Reason number four, the Alabama defense. Alabama is going to be without one of their top corners, Josh Job, but there's plenty of worry for Cincinnati regardless. Will Anderson might be one of the best edge rushers in the sport and he's not even their leading tackler. Their leading tackler is Henry Tuoto, who has been all over the field this season with 100 tackles and 4 sacks. Cincinnati running back Jerome Ford, who has had a really good year, is not going to want to see much of him. The Alabama secondary has shown some flaws this season. Texas A&M and Arkansas both threw the ball fairly well against the Tide, and with the absence of Job, the Tide will rely heavily on Kyrie Jackson, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and Jalen Armour Davis, in which none of them have played an important snap in the college football playoff before. It cannot be ignored that Stetson Bennett, the Georgia quarterback, still had 340 passing yards in the SEC championship. Ritter will have to take every advantage of Cincinnati if they want to have a chance to win this game. Reason number five, the special teams. An issue to watch out for in this game is the kicking game for Cincinnati. The Bearcats have had three different kickers attempt field goals this season, and they're combined 7 of 17, one of the worst marks in the nation. Alabama's kicker, Will Richard, is 68 of 69 on extra points and 16 for 20 on field goals. Advantage, Alabama. At the end of the day, we've given advantage to Cincinnati secondary, Alabama's weapons and offensive line, Cincinnati's overall defensive unit, Alabama's top receiver and special teams, but what it all comes down to is quarterback play and coaching, in which Nick Saban and Bryce Young take crown in. Cincinnati will need to put together the perfect game formula, intercept Bryce Young, steal a possession, make their field goals, stop Brian Robinson in the run game, who we barely talked about, and Desmond Ritter needs to play the game of his life. But for Alabama, all they really need is Bryce Young to play like Bryce Young. If he plays well, Alabama will certainly win. I am picking Alabama to win the game by a score of 34-17. to 17. Bryce Young will throw upwards of 300 yards and three touchdowns despite the strong secondary of Cincinnati. The running back Brian Robinson will have a solid running game and Jamison Williams will have a Devontae Smith-like performance like we saw in last year's playoff. I believe Ritter will keep the Bearcats in early, but mistakes and pressure will come in the second half. Final score, Alabama 34, Cincinnati 17.